In this video, I'm going to take you through the introductory basics of actually setting up a CSS document to work with inside of Dreamweaver. Again, remember in my Dreamweaver videos, we are focused more on the WYSIWYG aspect versus the actual coding elements that go into setting up a website like this. So before I dive into the actual creation, I just want to take you through the interface and show you what I've set up here. So what we have here is I'm still working with my cat website and I have just a header, a couple of paragraphs and an image here. I cannot emphasize this enough to folks. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in and kind of drag on over here. This site definition is key whenever you're doing CSS design. It's going to make your life a heck of a lot easier. Again, even if you're starting over on a new computer, double check this. You may have to redefine the actual site here. So what this is going to help me do is whenever I make the new external CSS file, it's going to store it directly in this folder for me. Now, the next thing I want to show everybody is the two places that you can get started with actually creating a CSS document. One is actually along the bars here. There's CSS Designer. And right now, I have nothing CSS related in my document. I can click on the little plus next to sources. And what it'll do here is notice I get three different options here where I can create a new CSS file, attach an existing CSS file, which I don't have for this example, or define directly in the page. If you remember me discussing that briefly in the previous kind of intro to CSS overview video, that's how we set up that option there. Now, I'm not going to click anything here yet. Just hold that thought. I do want to point out, let me zoom out, that up on the file drop down menu, you can go under new if you prefer and just choose under the new documents. You can choose to just create a brand new CSS file. The thing is though, I'll show you this method because when you do it this way, what happens is if you click create, notice it actually opens the CSS document for you here. And let me go ahead and jump up here just to, so you can see it. CSS documents, unlike their counterparts, the HTML document, we don't have, if you look all the way on the other side of my monitor here, you see how split and live are actually grayed out. There's no preview options when it comes to a CSS file. This works in the background attached to the CSS document. So I'm going to go ahead and X out of that and not save anything. And instead, what I'm going to do is let's come back and zoom into our CSS designer. This can make life a lot easier as far as the layout goes is if we just generate it through the designer here. So I'm going to go ahead and click my plus symbol to create a new CSS file. And what I'm going to do here is it's going to ask me for a file or URL. And how do I want to add it? To keep the entire document external and all in one place, we really want to make it a link. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call the file main. Now, just to point out to you, you do have some conditions that you can set as far as your media queries. We will get into these later for right now, though. Just note that you can click on the little carrot head here to actually open and close that. So this is all I'm going to do for right now. I do want to emphasize that you could browse if you had, you know, an already, you know, CSS document already made. Notice that it's asking me to go directly into the site root. Again, that site definition kind of coming to the rescue here. So, you know, you can't, you could say main here. I'll say save. Make sure that you have links selected and say OK. OK, so let me go ahead here and show you what has happened. Now we're going to kind of slingshot back over to our image here. Notice under sources now we have a brand new link available to us here under main CSS. So this means now that we have generated a link to the HTML document. And if I go ahead and zoom out here a second, we're now going to come up 
And I just want to show you here what happens because you may have noticed it that your interface changed a little bit. Notice under the tabby info.html file, you now have like a source code and then you have this main CSS little button here that you can click on. It'll go into a split view for you. And if you see now down at the bottom, it's starting out that HTML or that CSS document for you. For right now, I'm gonna go back to source code. And then I'm also going to come back into the design view. So now I have this great page layout here that I can work with. And some of the things that I can do here, come back down to that properties panel. Now the properties panel is probably as front and center as you can get with CSS here. So you have a lot of different options here as far as different ways to apply the CSS, but also too, you have options that you can associate with the CSS over here as well. So just for an example here, I go ahead and highlight my title here, which is actually a header. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over and add a selector here. Now this may be a little bit intimidating, but I just want to show you some more options here as far as going through and setting up CSS. So you see how it's now created a definition for me here. So what I can actually do is I can come under the properties and add a CSS property here. Now you may be saying, okay, well, what do I want to change here? What do I want to actually add? Well, for instance here, if I go ahead and start typing, like I start with the letter C, you get a lot of options that pop up for you. So for example, if I say color and I go ahead and tell it that I want it to inherit whatever color that I'm working with here, I can then change it as far as setting up and working with the actual declaration here. So I've set the color to be inherent. And now what I can do is we can come in and maybe, I don't know, I want this to be maybe like a nice dark blue. All right, so let's go ahead. Let's take this one little step further. So you've now created, first off under files, let's go ahead and take a look at that here. Let me go ahead and zoom in and just bump this over just so that you can see it. Notice now you have a main.css file in there. We want this on the level with the other HTML documents. Yes, it does have a different icon in comparison to its HTML counterparts, that's okay. In case anybody is interested, I'm also going to show you just uh, so that you're aware of it. I'm going to hop into this code view. Again, we're not focused on code, but let me zoom in. This right here, this line six, this is actually what is doing the primary connection for you. That is making your HTML document be aware of that CSS document. Everything else stays the same. Uh, as far as the code goes, that's the main line that gets added in that kind of makes all the magic happen. So I'm going to zoom out and let's go back into design. All right, so let's start with the basics here. So you do have the property panel down here that you can come into. Remember, uh, previously we were using this as far as the HTML options were concerned. However, we also have a CSS structural side of things. So previously, what we would do is, you know, we'd kind of highlight the text here and we would make changes using the page property and coming under appearances here, under HTML. Well, now we may actually want to make different changes using that CSS tag here. So if we go ahead and zoom in, like I'm working with headings. So maybe I want to change all of the heading fonts, I don't know, to Baskerville. And heading one, I'd really like that to be more of maybe a dark forest green here. 
and we'll say apply. Okay. So now if I zoom out, notice there is that all about tabbies. But then I also want to draw your attention here down at the bottom. And this is where things can get a little bit tricky and that's why we're going to spend a couple of weeks on this. Notice I have a format for heading one. And if I go under CSS, remember that little page property that popped up. Notice here it's targeting the H1 rule that we declared and we're setting the fonts and the color here. So let me go ahead so that you can see the power of CSS. Let me make a new header. Taking care of your tabby cat. All right, so I have two headings. And notice when I started typing the second heading here, you see how it also took on all of the declaration elements that I made for the first heading here. But what if I, going back to my original example, what if I say to myself, you know what, I actually don't like that dark green here. I actually want more of a dark orange, like a brownish color. So I come in, I select a different color. You see how both of the headings changed. That right there, everyone, is the power of CSS. It may be, it's on a very much smaller scale, but I can come in, you know, maybe I say, oh, you know what? I actually want it to be a really light blue. Changes everything on the page. Now imagine, again, linking that to multiple pages. That's the power of the CSS. Now, what is actually going on underneath the hood? This is the last item since this video is getting a little bit long. What actually did we do here? Well, if you remember, I'll show you the code real quick. Notice up at the top here, we have that link href document for the style CSS. With this first example here, what we have done is we created lines 7 through 14. If you remember in the previous video, I talked about locations for CSS declaration. We declared this in the document here. So this is trickling down and affecting all the subsequent H1s, which is great. We will get more into, I'm gonna say save all to save all my documents here. We will get more into as far as working with the external CSS design. But for right now, I wanted to get you up and running as far as being able to select an element using the page properties and being able to go through and start working with your CSS and just playing around with it a little bit. This takes some time to wrap your head around. This is why we're starting with design elements over actual structural elements first. Structure, we are throwing a whole new uh, world of code and design on this. So again, practice with this make some CSS documents and also to go in and, you know, just practice changing elements around.